it, it, it's, tr it, it's a great pleasure. Uh, not everybody knows that Herzl was uh, an admirer, admirer not only of uh, you know, Jewish nationalism, he was a le leader of the, the movement to establish a Jewish state in, in, in Palestine. Uh, but he was also uh, a theoretician of nationalism. And he wrote about Hungarian nationalism. It was the, the, the thousandth anniversary of, uh, of the Hungarian people and he observed the, the ceremonies. And he, he wrote that the nation is beautiful not just this or that nation, but every nation is beautiful because it brings out the best qualities in human beings. National conservatism conferences are, are, are being organized by, by uh, nationalists in different countries. Uh, they're run by the, the Edmund Burke Foundation. And our goal is a, an alliance of nationalists. You could even call it a, a nationalist international uh, where we seek friendship and cooperation uh, among those of us who care about preserving God, scripture, nation, congregation, family uh, in, in all of the democratic nations where, uh, where these things are being undermined and overthrown. Nationalism is a, a principled standpoint that sees the world as governed best when nations are given their independence, when the political order is based on the independence of nations. And that idea has uh, a very clear source. It's a biblical idea. And uh, when, when we read the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, uh, we see a series of, uh, of empires, uh, the, the Egyptian Empire, Babylonian, Assyrian, then the Persian Empire, and then l later, later on, uh, Alexander and, and the Romans. And all of these empires, even though they're very different from one another, they, they, they all have the same kind of worldview. They, they think that that the gods have ordered the king to conquer the whole earth in order to bring peace and prosperity. And what we find in the Bible, I mean, the, uh, Moses and the prophets of Israel, they rebelled against this idea and they presented a new idea, which is that uh, different nations have different ways. There have to be borders between the nations. And even though God, creator of heaven and earth, gives the Torah, the, the, the teaching to Moses, which is supposed to be for all mankind, still he gives him borders. And he says, the Jews stay on this side, you're not allowed to go conquer the other nations. And this is the beginning of the, the, the alternative theory that uh, there's one God in heaven and he judges all, all, all men and all nations. But we as human beings, we don't have the strength and the wisdom to be able to conquer all the nations and make one law for all of them. We don't, we don't have that ability. And so, it, very basic, very, very basic cornerstone of Judaism is that there are, are borders and, and the Jews approach God through our own re religion and other peoples will do things their way. And uh, throughout Christian history, uh, we've seen many Christian nations which have looked to the Old Testament as their source. They say, we don't want to be like the Roman Empire. We don't want to be like the Babylonian Empire. We don't want to be the, the unjust, tyrannical rulers of dozens or hundreds of other peoples. We want to rule ourselves and to bring ourselves close to God. And uh, Hungary is one of these, these nations that have been, been blessed with this Jewish and Christian heritage, especially Christian, of course, and, uh, and, and, and therefore are open to the idea of uh, of limits to the power of the state and the power of the people that is supposed to rule itself under God. Liberals have been allied with conservatives uh, at, least since, at least since the 1960s. The combination was called fusionism. Uh, the idea was that, that conservative, we would be conservative at home in, in our private space and we'd be liberal in, in the public space and, and, and just you know empty the public space of uh, of religion and of uh, nationality and other things that, that, that represent co collective goals. And that hasn't worked. It hasn't worked at all. It's, it has destroyed conservatism. And, and, we're not, and, and after conservatism is destroyed, the, we, we see that you get two generations of liberalism and then it collapses into Marxism. So we're not doing that anymore. That's not going to happen anymore. The conservatives are going to be willing to ally themselves with liberals in order to fight the Marxists but it's going to be on new terms. And the, the, the new terms that I propose is the reverse, 
the public sphere has to be concerned with the transmission of national and religious inheritance from past generations to future generations. If we don't do that, we're finished. So I'm proposing a public conservatism with carve-outs for minorities. If you're a minority that, you, you let, let, let's say that you're, 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 you're Jewish and you don't, you don't identify fully with the Christian public culture, so I think it's just and makes sense to have what we call carve-outs, that there'll be uh, uh, an, uh, a, a system of protections that allow the minority to be free and not to be persecuted, but the public space is not empty. The public space continues to be Christian. I think that that can work, and that's, that's the proposal that I, I think we're going to see that going forward in the relationship between conservatives and liberals. There is no conservatism without religion. Uh, I mean, the, w the thing that, that conservatives are interested in conserving uh, is the, 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 tr the, the national traditions which in Europe are Christian. They're Christian traditions. The cr Christianity uh, and, and the Bible give the framework for uh, European nations to, to, to understand their place in the world. And uh, if you remove Christianity, uh, and if you remove Christianity and Judaism, you remove the biblical inheritance, then what you get is an open space that can be filled by all sorts of powerful things, like Nazism, like communism. Those, those are the ideologies that take over when you eliminate the, the, the traditional religion from the public sphere. You can't, you can't, you can't fight the impulse to, uh, to Marxism with nothing. You can't say, we're going to create an emptiness and there's, there's going to be an empty space in the center of public life and then think that that empty space is going to, that people will fight for the empty space against Marxism. That, that's impossible. Human beings aren't like that. There has to be something and that something has to have uh, the, uh, uh, both the wisdom of thousands of years in tradition, of tradition and the uh, the, 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 the moral compass to be able to give a, uh, a public morality to the public, uh, to, uh, a morality to the, to, to the people and to the government, to establish limits on the government and limits on the people. Christianity, when it's at its best, it can do that. Judaism, when it's at its best, it can do that. If we don't try to do it through Christianity and Judaism, then, then it, it, it will happen, but it will be ha happen using invented, concocted, revolutionary ideologies. We've seen what they do. So I, I, don't, think there's any, I don't think there's any question about this. I think if, to be a conservative is to, uh, to uh, learn the, uh, the Christian and Jewish tradition the biblical traditions of our forefathers and adapt them so that they fit to our, our needs today. So the, the, I'm not saying that you, you know, we, we can't go back to 100 years ago or 300 years ago. There is no going back. But what we can do is find the most important things that our forefathers believed and adapt them to our needs right now. The stronger we make them, the more likely it is that we can avoid falling into Nazism or communism. The Edmund Burke Foundation had a, uh, a conference um, almost two years ago in Rome uh, in which uh, uh, Chris DeMuth, who's a you know, major figure in the American conservative movement, interviewed uh, Prime Minister Orban. And two years ago, Prime Minister Orban, uh, when, when, when uh, he was asked what the, public, what the, the international role of of Hungarian conservatism would be, he said, well, look, you know, we're, we're a small country, we're on the edge of Europe, and, uh, and, and the leadership can't come from us. It has to come from major nations, the American, Britain, and France, and Italy, that they have to take the lead in doing this, and we'll contribute what we can. And now it's two years later, and we see that rather than taking the leadership, uh, the, those Western European and American nations have, are, are, are collapsing into ever greater uh, public dissolution. I mean, I mean they, they're uh, disintegrating and the, the ability to keep them together and the, the ability to lead uh, in any direction is, uh, is diminishing rapidly. And so it's good to see that there's also been a change, I think, in the Hungarian attitude to, towards uh, other countries. 
in, in, in which I think, that, I think that the Hungarians have understood that they have no choice but to take uh, some strong degree of leadership. Uh, hopefully other nations will, will follow as well, but the, the Hungarians are thinking about this more than other people are. And uh, I, th I think Hungarians know that if they, don't, if, if they don't win friends and allies in other countries, then their own future is going to be very difficult. And at this point, uh, there's, uh, there's active Hungarian out outreach. I think it, it, it is having a, a noticeable effect in America and other countries. We'll, we'll see where it goes. Wherever people cease to respect the Old Testament, they also cease to respect Jews and they also cease to respect the state of Israel. I, this is a very, very strong, strong correlation. Uh, and so um, Marxists and, and, and Nazis, they have no problem disrespecting Jews because they, they disrespect the Bible. They have no reason to respect Jews. They just see Jews as an enemy uh, because the, the Jewish idea of, 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 of God of all nations is a very powerful idea and they want to destroy it. So they destroy the Jews in order to destroy the idea. But um, it's also true that, uh, that where the Bible is thrown out, patience runs out for traditional Jews very, very quickly. Um, so uh, that can happen among liberals. If liberals say we don't need the Bible, uh, then they also start to uh, uh, very quickly to say, um, well, you know, those, those traditional Jews, they, w w we don't like their circumcision and, and we don't like their, their, their uh, dietary laws and we don't like their synagogues and we don't like that. And you, you very, very quickly start, the liberals start to say, you know, if, if a Jew becomes a liberal, then he's okay, I'm on his side. But if a Jew stays a, 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 an Orthodox Jew believing in God and can, conserving his traditions, that's not okay. There's plenty of anti-Semitism among liberals of that kind. And now people will ask me about anti-Semitism, about Christians. There's plenty of Christian anti-Semitism. But again, I think that you usually see Christian anti-Semitism where Christians say, you know, I, I don't need the Old Testament. I have the New Testament. The Jews rejected the, Old, the New Testament. The Jews rejected Jesus. And so I, I don't need the Jews. Then you get anti-Semitism. But Christians who study the Bible Seriously, they study, I mean, the, the Old Testament is 80% of the Christian Bible. Christians who seriously study the Old Testament, they believe that God actually speaks through the prophets of Israel to them, they, they are very rarely anti-Semites.